Welcome back to Grade 8 History, Unit Number 2, Canada's Changing Society, 1890 to 1914. This is Lesson Number 17, How Did Relations with the British Empire Impact Canada? Before we begin today's video, let's consider the following. What things, images, symbols, remind us of Canada's past connection to the British Empire? When I'm finished speaking, I want you to put the video on pause so that you can write down a list of at least three things that you've seen that would remind people of Canada's past connection to the British Empire. All right, let's proceed. At the end of the 1800s, many Canadians believed that keeping a close connection to the British Empire was the best option for Canada. Others believed that Canada should strengthen its ties with the U.S. Canadian nationalists believed that Canada should be separate from both Britain and the U.S. When Wilfrid Laurier became Prime Minister in 1896, Canadians were still very divided on the issue of Canada's loyalties. Many French Canadians and immigrant groups had a more nationalistic viewpoint. However, most English Canadians were devoted to supporting Britain. And guys, remind me to do this in tomorrow's class. I will show you how you can use a black magic marker to transform Wilfrid Laurier into Mr. Spock on a $5 bill. In the late 1800s, Britain was following a policy of imperialism, a policy of acquiring and ruling over other countries. The main goals of imperialism were to improve Britain's wealth and influence. Britain's historic power made many Canadians proud of their British heritage. Imperialism was also driven by discrimination and racism. Many Canadians of British background believed in the idea that they were the superior culture and that in time non-European cultures would disappear because they were primitive and in need of European ideas and technology. These Canadians believed that only the strong would survive and that everyone would eventually have to adopt their quote-unquote civilized culture. Just take a look at this illustration. My question for you is, how does this illustration support the argument that imperialism promoted racism? When I'm finished speaking, please put the video on pause so that you can get a closer look at this illustration and then write down your response to the question I just presented. Now let's continue. Today, Canadians celebrate Victoria Day as the unofficial start to the Canadian summer. This holiday was started in 1845 to celebrate the birthday of Queen Victoria. Although she never visited Canada, it was Victoria who decided that Ottawa would be Canada's capital and she named the province of British Columbia. In 1897, Laurier visited England to take part in Victoria's Diamond Jubilee. This event was an opportunity for all of Britain's colonies to show their allegiance to the British Empire as Victoria celebrated her 60th year as the Queen. Victoria gave Laurier a knighthood at the event, which is pretty spectacular given that Laurier was Canada's first French-Canadian Prime Minister. The Jubilee was celebrated across Canada, with some cities celebrating for two full weeks. The celebrations had the positive effect of bringing Canadians from diverse backgrounds together. Throughout the 1800s, Britain enjoyed its reputation as a dominant political power. But some territories that were ruled by Britain began to rebel. For example, in 1815, Britain had taken control of southern Africa from the Dutch. Dutch settlers, calling themselves Boers, resisted British assimilation. They moved farther north and set up their own free states. In the 1890s, gold was found in land occupied by the Boers. This led to British colonists in South Africa coming into the area, which in turn led to tensions between the British and the Boers. In 1899, the Boer War 
began. Britain called on all of its colonies to support the empire in the war. English Canadians demanded the federal government send troops to support Britain in order to strengthen Canada's cultural and political ties with Britain and the other colonies. French Canadians, on the other hand, opposed sending troops since they felt the war had nothing to do with Canada. Many French Canadians and immigrants felt that Britain was suppressing the Dutch minority. Take a look at this poster here, one of many that were used at the time. How could posters like this inspire English Canadians to support the British during the Boer War? How do you think French Canadians and immigrants reacted to seeing this poster? When I finish speaking, put the video on pause so you can take a closer look at this poster and then write down your response to the two questions in blue. All right, moving on. Laurier's government was divided on the issue. Laurier presented a compromise. Instead of sending Canadians by conscription, forcing citizens to enter the military, he would only send volunteers to fight. This compromise did not please the French Canadians, and the English Canadians were not pleased because they saw this as too weak. Henri Bourassa resigned from the House of Commons in disgust. More than 7,000 Canadians of English, First Nations, and Métis descent volunteered to fight in the war. This was the first time a large group of Canadians left to fight overseas. Once there, the soldiers were under the control of the British Army. Anti-war sentiment rose steadily amongst French Canadians over the course of the war. Britain received harsh criticism worldwide as it was learned that over 26,000 innocent Boer women and children had been killed, many having died as a result of being forced to live in concentration camps where the living conditions were dreadful. Despite the criticism of Canada's involvement in the war, Canadian soldiers were given a warm welcome home when the fighting came to an end. Sometimes the goals of imperialism were achieved through peaceful means. Groups that believed in imperialism often worked through charitable organizations to assimilate other cultures. In 1900, the Imperial Order Daughters of the Empire was formed to support British soldiers who fought to establish British colonial rule. The Women's Foreign Missionary Society was a Canadian organization that worked in Canada and overseas to convert others to Christianity. The Canadian Mission to the Indians was formed by the Presbyterian Church. It established schools in Trinidad and the Caribbean to introduce students to Christianity. In 1908, Britain called upon its dominions, partly self-governing colonies such as Canada, to show their loyalty by sending money to help the British build up its navy. Laurier came up with a compromise. He proposed that Canada build its own small navy that could help Britain in times of need and protect Canada the rest of the time. Laurier introduced the Naval Service Bill in 1910. This compromise, as well as the other compromises Laurier made during his career, earned him the nickname, the Great Conciliator. And here's a political cartoon, which you can also see in your textbook. My question for you is, how is the artist expressing criticism toward Laurier's decision to spend money on building a Canadian Navy instead of giving the money to Britain? Once more, when I am finished speaking, you are going to put the video on pause so you can get a closer look at this political cartoon and then write down your response to the question in blue. Okay, time for the wrap up. Let's finish today's video by considering the following, and we will take up your responses to these two questions in tomorrow's class. One, what caused some Canadians to support the British Empire and others to reject the empire? And two, Laurier has been referred to by historians as the Great, Concili Great Conciliator. Sorry. What other labels might imperialists and anti-imperialists use for Laurier? 
my face speaking. You'll put the video on pause so that you can write down your responses to these two questions. If you don't feel confident in your ability to answer either or both of these questions, you need to go back, watch this video at least one more time, and then when you're ready, put the video on pause. I look forward to showing you guys how to transform Wilfred Laurier into Mr. Spock on a $5 bill. But more than that, I'm looking forward to hearing your responses to all of the questions posted throughout this recording. But until tomorrow's class, this concludes today's video.